Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you how to create some art inside Adobe Dimension. So right now I'm going to show you how to combine photos and 3D elements to create art using Adobe Dimension CC as well as Photoshop. So we're going to start in Adobe Dimension and it's so easy to use. So let's have a look here. Now this comes with its own 3D objects and different things. So if we go up here, we can see the assets. These are the 3D models that come with it. So we can just simply drag any of those out onto the stage. We've got images for backgrounds. We've got lights. We've got materials, which are textures. And once you get a lot of assets, we can go in here and we can search. But there's another thing we can do. We can import our own 3D models and photos, or we can grab them from Adobe Stock, which is what I've done. And if you look here, I grab the photograph and I'm just going to drag that photo and release it. And what it's going to do now is this is going to set it up as our backdrop. So this is the photograph that we're going to use to create our artwork. It's really simple. So you can get a ton of photographs or 3D objects from Adobe Stock. In fact, there's a whole ton of 3D objects there that are absolutely free. And you can search right here just by clicking in there. We can search the 3D library or photo library within Adobe Stock. So what we're going to do is we're going to build this cool piece. I'm just going to scroll up and here's some models that I grabbed. All of these are free. I want to put a boat on there. So why don't we just grab this boat and we're just going to drag and drop. And notice what it does is it sees this 3D plane here and it's going to bring it in into the 3D. And now it's going to be huge. And you can see that it's absolutely massive. But don't worry, we can scale it. So we can actually um, select it. If we look up here, we can see there's our boat there and we've got our sizes. We can actually just click and drag on any one of those. But what we want to do is lock it in by hitting that. And now we can scale it up or down just by dragging. See that? That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to grab this tool here. This is the scale tool. And if we drag that, we can also just click drown and we're going to resize it. So why don't we grab the move tool? and we're moving this object. So this is an object that we're working with in 3D space. Now notice we've got this plane. This shows the plane there. Now I could rotate the boat, but rather than rotate the boat, what I want to do is rotate this whole plane. So this first set of tools here enable us to work on an object. The second set of tools here enable us to work on the plane. Okay, so why don't we go down here and we're going to click on our plane tool there and this shows us our plane. And we can actually just pull this up or down. And notice this is the entire 3D object that we're kind of working with right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to scale this down. And I'm doing the whole scene. And you can tell because of these lines there. And I'm just going to use the hand to pan it. And this is not bad. Now let's rotate this whole scene around right now. See that? So what I'm doing is I'm now turning that scene around to match the water. So if you look at it here, see that? See how that plane now is now matching the perspective of the water. So we can do different things. Like I want this boat to go down into the water a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the boat and not the plane. And notice I can pull that down until it's sinking. But let's pull it down to about there. All right, that's looking good. So now we've added our boat to the scene. Now, don't worry about it not looking fantastic right now, because what we're going to do is we're going to render it when we're done. And then when we render it, that's going to add all the nice lighting and reflections and different things like that. So why don't we have a look at setting up some reflections and different things? So if we go over here by our environment, we've got our lights and different things like that. So right now we've got an environment light turned on. And if we turn that off, you can see what it's doing. It's just illuminating our object. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit sunlight and we're going to twirl this open and I want to actually set some light. And if I look at this, I see it's shadow here and shadow there, which means the light's coming from this direction and we want to match that. So what we're going to do is we are going to turn the sunlight up so we can see it nice and bright. We'll get to the cloudiness in a little bit, but what we want to do is we can raise it and you can tell by the shadow of where we are. So we want to rotate that round. So the shadows in the front of the boat, see that how now that's matching the shadow direction here is matching there. And we could give it a little bit of cloudiness because 
Uh, even though, you know, it's a little hazy up there, we just want to kind of add to that. So we can just kind of play around and we can play around for the intensity to make that sunlight brighter or darker. If you want an idea of what it's going to look like, we can click up here and this will give us a little render preview there. And that's going to give us, you know, some kind of an idea of what's going to happen when this scene starts to render. And we can see there's the boat there and it's going to look like that. That looks really bright. So I'm going to take the environment light down a little bit. And that environment is just an ambient light. Okay, so we're looking pretty good for our boat there. Now, I just want to really raise the stakes and make this real fun. So we're going to do the rocket here. We're going to do the Cochrane thing, you know, from uh, Star Trek, you know, where we're building a rocket or, you know, Elon Musk may be building a rocket in the backyard and we're going to do that right now. And we just get that warning. It tells us that this model is going to be huge. And there it is. And that's good. We want it to be huge. Now we can select the different things here. If we select there, we're working on the boat. If we select here, we're working on the rocket. So these adjustment tools here, see this little widget, we can click and drag. And now we can drag our rocket ship, you know, wherever we want. And you can see that, that we get those little uh, things. This will take it up and down. And these widgets here will take it over there. So I want it to make it look like it's behind the building. So I'm going to bring it right over there and maybe send it back just a little bit. So let's take it back and notice what I'm doing. I'm just pushing this in 3D space. So it's going to be about there. Now I want it bigger. Now remember, we want to change it up here. If I change the bottom, these ones, it's going to move the whole scene, which means will also affect the boat. But I just want to affect the rocket. So we're going to go up there, we're going to grab our scale tool. And now with that scale, if I grab it in the middle there and I click and drag, notice that I can scale this up and let's make it really big. Nice. Now this is obviously behind the building, but it's not showing that way. We're going to change that in Photoshop in a little bit. We're going to go in and actually do a little tweaking, but let me also move it over. So I'm just going to grab our move tool a little bit and I just want to nudge it over there. So we're going to have a little overlap behind there, which will show distance, make this look bigger because it's behind the building. All right. Notice we've got shadows here, but the shadows are not really what we're looking for. What we want is a reflection. So what we want to do is let's go over to our environment, click on there. And the environment is everything together. This is our scene. And why don't we have a look at the different options here? So if we look at it here, we can see, let's twirl these up. So we can just kind of hide those and see what else we've got down here. And we see we've got our ground plane. What do we have on our ground plane? Notice here we've got our shadow. If I turn this all the way down, it'll take the shadow off. The ground plane only affects around it. So what we want is not a shadow. We want a reflection. So if we look on here, we can see we've got a reflection, roughness and opacity. Let's turn the opacity up a little bit. And let's take it up to about there. And now to see how that's going to look, we just have a look here inside the render view and just give it a second. Now we can see, ah, look, there's a reflection starting to happen underneath the boat. Now there's a roughness, you know, like this water's got a little ripple on this. I'm going to give it a little roughness, but not too much. And we're going to let that go. Now there's another option we have is depth of field. So the depth of field, what this will enable us to do is to turn it on and then make the background blurry. So we can play around by just setting our focal length here. We can click here and say, you know what, this will be in focus and everything behind it will be out of focus and we can adjust the amount of blur to do that. So if we look up here and our render preview, the boat will be sharp, but notice our rocket ship now is starting to get a little bit blurry because we're adding that depth of field. And I just wanted to show you that so you can see how it works. But when we actually look at this photograph, it's kind of sharp all the way through. So we don't want to turn on the depth of field. It won't look realistic. The other thing we can do is a camera perspective. If we look at the field of view, you know, right now it's 45 and that looks about right. But if we go wide to see how it gives us a very wide angle or we get a very long. So it shows like that lens compression. But let's go back to 45. I just wanted to let you know that you can change that. Now, one of the things you may want to do is take note when you take a photo, if you're working with your own photo, which you can, of course, is what's the focal length. Look on the metadata, find out the focal length, and then just match it here. And then your perspective on your 3D objects is going to be the same because 
as you know, obviously it got bigger and smaller, but when you scale it with a wider lens, everything's going to look fatter and further apart. With a longer lens, when we scale it down, everything is going to look um, like it's not going to deform very much. And it's objects going to look closer together because of lens compression. All right. So anyway, so we've got that kind of pretty good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the render view over here. Before I do, I just want to mention a couple of things here. We can change these lighting setups and we can change the textures. So if we go under here and we look at these different assets, we've got materials here, which are the textures. We can select these different objects. In fact, when we twirl this open, you can see all the different parts and you could apply different materials there. And you can see there's a massive library of materials that come here with it. You know, we've got bricks, wood, wicker, we've got, you know, all kinds of things, cardboard, we've got, you know, metals, glasses, all that stuff. So if we want to change any of these textures, we can just simply select those areas and click on those textures and we can change it. But in this case, we're not going to because I'm kind of happy with that. But also just want to let you know, we've got different lighting setups and we can even search on Adobe stock and find more. But I like what we've got here. Let's have a look at the render preview. So we're going to click into render now. And this is going to show us right now, we're just doing a fast render. So it won't take too long for this to render it. And then when we're ready to render, we just click the render button. And once we start to render here, we can quickly start to see, even though this is rough, each pass is going to look better and better, but we can start to see, you know, how much reflection and everything we've got here. And I'm looking at this. I don't think we have enough reflection on the boat. So we can just click on design and we're just going to go back in here. And what I want to do is just click on my environment. And I definitely need more reflection. So I'm going to bring the reflection opacity up much higher, maybe around about 90. And now we're going to go back to render and we're going to click on render again. And now it's going to start a new render and we'll see pretty quickly, you know, how this is going to look. And we can already tell right now, looking at it, that the reflections are looking a lot better. Those are more what we want. Notice we've also got reflection from the rocket and we're going to deal with that in a second because when we look at it, the reflection down here is really cool, but up here is weird. But one of the cool things about this is we're able to bring it into Photoshop and have the different layers that we can work in. And in one second, when this is finished rendering, we're going to go in and we're going to do that. All right. Now we can see that the render is finished. And one of the cool things about that is we'll see this option here. Now this says open in Photoshop. So if I click on this, it's going to bring our scene into Photoshop. So we can see our scene here inside of Photoshop. Notice the grid lines are gone and now we've just got our rendered objects. Now, obviously we need to put this behind the building. So let me show you what we get here. We get this render and if we turn it on and off, we can see those are the rendered images and there they are on their own. And we can see I've got a reflection going all the way through there. We just need to get rid of it on this part. Now, the cool thing is it's easy to do that because we get additional layers. And if we turn this on, we get material masks here and selection masks makes it easy for us to select different parts of those models. See that? Or we can select the whole thing. And then we also get the depth information here. So this is a depth map. So if we were doing a depth of field effect, we could easily select that depth of field here where black would be closer to the camera. White is further away. So the white would be blurred and the darker it is, the sharper it would be. So notice this boat's more forward, so it would be darker, but we're not really doing the depth of field on here. So we're just going to kind of focus on that. So what I want to do is I want to kind of select around this rocket ship. So I'm just going to grab my selection tool. In fact, I could even use my magic wand in this case, make sure we've got that selected. And now I've selected that shape right there. So if I go in here and I'm just going to choose safe selection, so we're going to select and I'm just going to save this selection right now and we're going to call it rocket and click OK. And I'm going to hit control D to turn it off. All right, let's turn off these additional layers. And what we need to do here is we need to mask this out. So in order to mask it out, we're just going to create a layer mask around here. We're going to grab black. Now we want to make sure that we're painting just on our object here. So why don't I hide it first and let's zoom in a little bit and see what we're going to be looking at over here. There we go. So we just need to mask that out. I'm just going to grab a black brush here and I'm just going to paint out 
because that's not going to show reflection there. And let's go all the way up here. Now, what I want to do is I want to go to a hard edge brush. So I'm just going to choose a hard edge brush right there. And we're just going to go across the top of there. Now make sure opacity is all the way up to 100. And let me just go right on the edge. We're going to hit the X key because I've gone over and I'm just going to paint it back. Now if we want to paint in here where this will kind of show up, we can do that as well. So if we go a little bit smaller there, we can just paint in there. Just kind of show some of that detail of that rocket through there. So it just kind of looks like it's there in the distance. See that? All right, excellent. Now we want to go here and we want to cut this part out. So one way to do that is to actually just go there and we can just use our selection tool. And we're just going to select around there. Looking good. And let's go back onto our rocket layer, turn it on and select the mask. Now that we've got that mask there, we just need to grab our black brush again. And just paint out that area there where we've got the overlap. See that? That selection will protect it. Control D. And let's just hit Command 1 to go all the way back. So we're getting very close to having this done. Um, but I'm noticing here just a little bit at the bottom there. We wouldn't see that. So let me grab a brush here. And I'm just going to just increase it a little bit. And just kind of gently. Oh, I don't want it like that. We want a soft edge. Take the hardness all the way down. And then just paint a little bit there. So now it's kind of showing there. So now that reflection is looking a little bit more realistic to what you would see on the rocket ship. So one of the things I do want to do is just to simulate a little bit of atmospheric perspective. So in order to do that, I'm going to take this rocket and I'm just going to drop the saturation down a little bit and brighten it up. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so this is why I saved the rocket, because if I go onto the rendered layer here, I don't want to affect everything. I just want to affect the rocket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my select. Remember where I saved that selection. Now I'm going to load the selection. And which is the one I want is rocket. Click OK. Now we've got it right there. So there we go. We've got that part. So I'm going to just hit Control L for levels. And here we are in the levels right now. And what I want to do is I want to just kind of turn down the shadows. I'm going to go here and notice what that does is it just kind of softens out those shadows. And I'm just going to go this way to make it just a little lighter. So we want it to make it look like it's going off in the distance. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to hit Control U or Command U for hue saturation. And I'm going to bring down the saturation just a little bit. And what that's going to do is it's going to throw this off into the distance a little bit. See how it just kind of makes it look like it's more faded back. Now, if you look at this using 3D, the great thing about it is notice we've got our reflection here. And notice it's showing the true underside of the boat, which is the wonderful thing about doing a 3D object rather than just flipping this. And now we look at this. Wait, we set our lighting direction. Notice the lighting is hitting the rocket in the right place. It's hitting the boat in the right place. So the great thing about working with 3D objects is the lighting is going to match. Um, you can scale them. You can move them around. You can duplicate them. You can do a lot of different things. So you can see here just with this simple example how much fun you can have with Adobe Dimension. Um, I encourage you to experiment around. And why don't you post it into our Facebook group? I'll give you a link underneath. I'd love to see what you come up with. So don't forget you can grab photos and 3D objects directly from Adobe Stock within Adobe Dimension. And a lot of those objects are free. And I'm giving you a link to 10 free photos underneath in the links. And also, if you want to become a contributor and sell your images on Adobe Stock, get in front of millions of people, make a little extra money, that link is underneath too. So don't forget to smash that like button into dust. Drop a comment. Have you ever used 3D before? I'd love to know. Um, what do you think about it? Are you intimidated by, uh, by 3D? And is Adobe Dimension making it easier? Because I think it's super easy to use. So anyway, guys, um, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button right now and that little bell notification so you know when I upload new tutorials. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.